Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can use a brand new .NET 7 feature that helps you add meaning to your strings and make your developer experience way, way better. It is a very small feature, but you should start using it now because as we go, IDs will start using it more and more and your experience, even for the code you've written now, will get better retroactively. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe ring the sub notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. So let me show you what I have here. I have a simple console application and this is a .NET 6 project. So if I go here, .NET 6. And let's say I want to write a, a method over here that accepts some regex. So test, regex, string, regex. It accepts it as a string because maybe I want to take it and do something before I pass it down to the new regex class. Now here's the thing. The moment I create this and I pass a string here, as you can see, this pop-up appears and it has a bunch of options to help me write regex because no one knows how to write regex. And how is that possible? Because if I go to the constructor over here, there is nothing that guides my ID to go ahead and show me this pop-up over here, right? And if I switch to using Visual Studio, you will see that Visual Studio also has a similar view with some other settings over here that helps me write regex. Now, how is that possible? Well, it's possible because there's a set of methods and constructors in .NET, and that's a fixed standard set that developers know, and they have went ahead and they said, okay, for the regex constructor and for this method and for this other constructor, we will show this pop-up method as you use a string because we know that this string is a string, but it's a special type of string. It's a regex string. Now, the problem with that is that if you wanted to go ahead and use this method now, well, it doesn't have any context, no suggestions. It doesn't know that this is regex really behind the scenes, and it doesn't show me anything. Now, I'm pretty sure 99.9% .9 of you don't know this, but for years now, you could actually go ahead and add a sneaky comment here and say lang equals regex and now you can use the drop down so you can change the syntax of your string with this comment and now the ids recognize this and show you this drop down which is pretty cool however this looks ugly and imagine you have to use this everywhere that you use this method just to get the syntax highlighting and it doesn't stop with a drop down by the way this type of support also allows you to have syntax highlighting and if i remove that that goes away. If I add it back, it's here and it helps me read what's going on here. So this is where .NET 7 comes in and says, okay, we need to standardize this. Let's go ahead and add an attribute to standardize this. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to be a .NET 7 project over here and close that. And now what I can do is I can say string syntax. So we have a new attribute and I can say string syntax attribute dot and I have a bunch of different formats like JSON, regex, URI, XML, enum format, GUID format. I have so many different types of things that can now give meaning to my strings. So if I say regex now here, as you can see, nothing happens. And nothing happens because this is still an ID specific thing. IDs need to take this attribute detected and do something with it. But if I remove it and I go to Visual Studio, which, well, it is from Microsoft and Microsoft made the feature, so it should have support, then as you can see, nothing here yet. But if I go and say regex, now suddenly I have syntax highlighting on regex and all the autocomplete stuff that I had before. So now moving forward, if you have strings like regex or let's say we don't want to have that and we want to have test date time and maybe we accept some date time here so uh date time uh, well date time <laughs> and then we have date time format because we want to make it so you can format your date time in the method so i can pass the format over here so if i use this method now and i pass down the date time now then I can also pass, as you can see, it gives me autocomplete as if I did dot to string, which to string also has a special way to format your string. It has the same type of autocomplete capability now. And if I want to use something like that in my code, I can now do that. And it has not only the dropdown, but descriptions on what each thing is doing. And can even go further. 
For example, let's say I have a new method over here. Let's go ahead and change that and say test and say test JSON. Now I'm going to just remove that attribute for now and say JSON and in C sharp 11 we're getting raw string literals. So I might want to pass down JSON and now I can even have it in a syntax highlighted way. So I can do something like this name Nick and I have syntax highlighting. Now I had that before. This is ID specific, but here's the thing. I can even have something like this where I have a mistake in my JSON because this is not an array that is closing, but my ID, because it's not a valid JSON object, just completely ignores it. But if I go here and I say string syntax and I pass down the string syntax attribute dot JSON, now not only does it recognize it even if it's unfinished, it also lets me know that, hey, you're goofed up, fix this. And when I fix it, the error goes away. So even incomplete, it allows me to do, well, anything I want. For example, if I haven't finished my JSON object, it tells me, basically, what are you doing? Illegal white space character, fix this. So it is a very, very handy feature and not everything in here is supported. So things like XML or URI or some other formats, I haven't had success using them, but as we go forward, support will be added. So my recommendation is go ahead and see what is in here in this dropdown. And if you're writing something in .NET 7 that accepts any of those things, start and slapping those attributes on your methods, because when Rider and Visual Studio finally implement those, your existing code will basically get the benefit of being able to recognize context and be even better than it is. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.